Hello everyone. Hope you all are doing well and fine and are preparing for your CLAT exams in a full swing. Since CLAT 2020 is almost here, Institute of London My University has taken this initiative to add to your last minute preparations. So in this video of CLAT Funda, we will be discussing about logical reasoning section of CLAT paper under following heads. Pattern sources of study, understanding logical reasoning, types of logical reasoning, syllabus, sample questions. Let us start with the paper format. As per the new changes brought in, the paper shall consist of 150 questions to be attempted in 2 hours and it's having 1 by 4th of a negative mark for each wrong answer. And therein, logical reasoning shall consist of 20% of the paper, which is about 28 to 32 questions. Logical reasoning forms a very scoring part of the paper in comparison to other sections. Having said that, time management is the key. To be able to finish entire paper smoothly in 120 minutes, a student should be able to finish off the logical reasoning section in about 25 minutes, which makes approximately 45 to 50 seconds available for each question and that is not sufficient if you haven't practiced enough number of questions but if you do good amount of practice beforehand it will suffice rather it will be enough time considering latest information on syllabus and pattern of CLAT most of the questions in this part shall now be consisting of short passages of about 300 words each which means that there will be a lot of reading and comprehension involved along with analysis and critical thinking. Reading and understanding the questions is therefore going to require patience and time. But we also have a perk in our hands this time. Now there are only 150 questions as compared to previous pattern of 200. Therefore, a student should be able to finish this section in available time given thorough familiarity with the type of content being presented. And since there is negative marking for incorrect answers, you need to be extra cautious about naturally occurring guesswork of our logical minds. Thus, practicing become, becomes even more important for this particular section. It gives an extra edge of systematized thinking and pattern to our brains, avoiding the guesswork. Without emphasizing the importance of practice questions anymore, let us look at the sources of study. For the first reference, the consortium has provided certain sample questions, study material and guidance on each subject on its website, which you cannot afford to miss. Thereafter, the well-known books of R.S. Agrawal or M.K. Pandey can be referred, and that should do enough for any CLAT aspirant. After this, all you need is practice questions and mock papers, which can be arranged from as many good sources as you can. Moving on to understanding the logical reasoning. Logic in simplest form means a reasonable way of thinking or explaining something. By reasoning, we mean the process of giving or finding reasons for something. So. Logical reasoning is when we use judgment to logically explain the reasons behind something. Logical reasoning forms an integral part of our daily lives. For an example, when we choose to wear slippers instead of shoes to visit nearby grocery shop, we use our logic based on our knowledge that it is comfortable to wear for covering the short distance, quick to put off and easy to clean after use. While when we choose shoes for a run, the choice is based on a different consideration of comfort and ease while running. The way we start considering factors of ease, comfort and durability, as soon as we want to do an act of walking or running, that's because of our logic. And by the process of utilization of existing knowledge and information related to these factors to come to a conclusion or take a decision, we are knowingly or unknowingly using a sense of reasoning. 
Similarly, in studies of both physical or social sciences, at every step there is data or observations. And from those observations, the scientists or scholars are assiduously trying to derive general principles that correctly describe the observed events or predict future events. So, here also, logical reasoning is deeply involved and because of this widespread use of logical reasoning in vast majority of events in our lives, understanding of this discipline is tested in almost all competitive exams and so is glad. Let us now look at the types of logical reasoning. On the basis of type of expression in the question, that is, the way the question is presented, logical reasoning can be categorized in verbal and non-verbal logical reasoning. In verbal logical reasoning, the author describes the question using words or statements, and the question is to be answered by properly comprehending those words. For example, questions testing analogy, wherein we try and we try to understand differences and similarities between the words. Whereas, in non-verbal logical reasoning, the examiner presents the question in the form of pictures or diagrams and it is left upon the test taker to decipher them and find the answer. Like in the case of Venn diagram, we need to understand the information hidden inside the diagram and then try to find the answer. Now, on the basis of type of reasoning involved or required by the question, logical reasoning can broadly be categorized into analytical and critical logical reasoning. In case of analytical reasoning, we need to analyze the information given in the form of various statements to draw inferences. It is pertinent to note that inferences necessarily flow from the provided information. Let us look at an illustration. Among straight lines, two statements are given. First, line X is parallel to line Y. And second, line Y is parallel to line Z. On the basis of these two sets of information, we can conclude that X must be parallel to Z. The word therefore denotes that the inference is derived from the given information. And it was not possible to say whether the X was parallel to Z without knowing the relationship of both x and z with the line y. This processing of information was done using analytical reasoning. On the other hand, in critical reasoning, we critically analyze the information. Mere knowledge and a simple analysis is not sufficient. We examine the arguments presented for their merits in order to reach a conclusion. Here, the conclusion may or may not directly flow from the given argument. Our thinking may also involve certain assumptions and we come to a conclusion which might be true but is not necessarily guaranteed even if the arguments presented are valid. Follow the instruction, uh, sorry, illustration for better understanding. First argument is economics involves numerical problems too. And second argument says, Farhan is having difficulty understanding numerical problems. Here, we suggest that it is most likely that Farhan will flunk the economics test. Presumption is, Farhan shall have difficulty understanding numerical concepts in economics. And that difficulty cannot be resolved in time, leading to his flunking the exam. So we can conclude that Farhan will flunk the test. But it is also possible that he might pass and the argument does not guarantee the presumptions we took. Nevertheless, it can be concluded that he will fail in lack of full information presented and it shall be a valid conclusion amongst other not so proper conclusions given in answer choices. This process of finding a conclusion is also called abductive reasoning, which is a form of critical reasoning skill. We may discuss different types of inductive, deductive and abductive reasoning in further videos. Coming down to the syllabus, 
by far the information on the consortium's website reads that the questions shall include short passages. The description is inclusive and not exhaustive. So, it is not very clear from any of the notifications of the consortium whether all the questions in this section shall be passage type or some other type of questions which used to be part of CLAT logical reasoning earlier are also retained. This makes the ambit of syllabus a little ambiguous. For a clarification, the video released by the consortium to aid the logical reasoning preparation mentions that a few questions of different forms may also be asked, leaving no certainty or approximation as to how many. Nevertheless, one can safely assume that now most of the questions in this sec section would be comprehension based verbal reasoning questions. Thus, our focus should remain towards those topics of syllabus which involve such reasoning as described and rest of the portion should also be covered to make sure we don't miss on anything that may fetch us a good score. So, before looking at the description of the pattern of new questions, let us see what are the topics in the existing syllabus of CLAT exam where such passage type questions may be asked. We shall consider these topics in the syllabus as important and prepare on priority basis. So, these topics include statement and assumptions, assertions and reasons, statement and conclusions, causes and effect, and statement and course of action type of questions. Then, questions based on direction, distance test, and blood relationships are also asked in form of passages. Also, syllogism, analogies, calendar-based questions, and the ones which require use of Venn diagram or tabulation of the information by the candidate still seem to be important for CLAT 2020. And then, there are some other topics such as coding and decoding, series and sequences, questions based on clock, time sequences, odd one out questions which are also called classifications, rankings, puzzles and understanding of cubes and dices. These topics used to be equally important in earlier CLAT exams but might not get tested so much in 2020 exam. In my opinion, we should still not leave these topics completely unattended as it is not explicit that these cannot be tested at all. Instead, there are surely going to be few questions based on these topics as well. And leaving any of these topics would mean skipping on a part of the syllabus. So, practicing for passages from different newspaper articles, magazines, etc. is a must. But a little time should also be devoted to learn and practice these other topics. Now, let us look at the description of the new syllabus. As per the changes infused, we'll have passages. And each passage will be followed by one or more questions that will require you to do as follows. Let us pay attention to the underlying working words and the highlighted words which form fundamental basic concepts in logical reasoning. So the first point says, recognize an argument, its premises and conclusions. So from here, we can understand that a question is the argument from the author and it has two basic parts. The premises or the evidences on which the conclusions are based and the conclusions or the inferences which the author is trying to draw on the basis of given premises or evidences. Next point reads, Identify the arguments set out in the passage. So here by argument, it may mean the premises or the evidences itself or different statements which give you information in a question. So there can be more than one argument in a passage and the student needs to identify all of them. At the same time, there will be extra information in the passage which is not so useful for answering the question, which we should be able to segregate. Next point says, critically analyze the patterns of reasoning and assess how conclusions may depend on particular premises or evidence, which is finding out what type of reasoning is being utilized by the author. What are the conclusions that author is suggesting? 
whether or not conclusions flow from those arguments, whether it is a valid argument or a weak one. Next, infer what follows from the passage and apply these inferences to new situations, which means inferences that we can comfortably draw from the passage and imagination of similar situations wherein similar conclusions can be reached. Next, draw relationships and analogies, identify contradictions and equivalence and assess the effectiveness of arguments. These are all types of assessments we can do with the arguments presented and conclusions suggested. Similarity and differences of arguments, whether arguments support the conclusion or contradict it, how strong or weak the argument is, that is the force of argument, etc. So this description basically guides a process of attempting a passage type question and all the verbs underlined give us a direction with regard to the approach towards the question in this section. Whereas highlighted or bold words are the basic concepts which we need to understand under the logical reasoning section. So let us simplify and summarize it. What do we do when we look at a question in the exam hall? We take a question as an argument from the author. Then we divide that in its basic ingredients. It will have premises or evidences and it will have conclusions. Conclusions will be based on the given information in the premises and premises should be the base of the conclusions. After dividing a question into its basic ingredients, we shall try to analyze whether the conclusions can be rightly drawn or logically drawn from the given premises or not and whether it's a valid argument or not. How strongly does the premise support the conclusion or whether one of the pre premise is opposing the conclusion. After analyzing the given passage, we will look at the question which shall be written at the end of the passage and try to do in accordance with what is being asked. For example, if it is an assumption that is being asked in the question following the passage, then we shall look into our brains what we were presuming to follow the conclusions of the author from the premises given. As it is rightly said, nothing teaches better than experience. Let us try an exercise doing some examples. Here is the first question. Aristotle wrote that a tyrant would be well advised to put on the appearance of uncommon devotion to religion. Subjects are more tolerant to unjust treatment from a ruler whom they consider God-rearing and pious. Moreover, as most subjects believe that even the gods on the side of a ruler, the subjects are less apt to move against him. Now, let us consider what are the premises and conclusion in this passage. First premise is given in the second statement that subjects may accept the unjust treatment from a ruler whom they consider to be God rearing or the one who is somehow related to God or religion. The second premise is given in the last statement that is if most of the subjects believe that God is on the side of the ruler they would not want to oppose him. And the conclusion is given in the first statement that, basing on given two premises, it is a good advice for a tyrant to put on the appearance related to religion or God. Now, let us look at the question. Which one of the following is an assumption on which Aristotle's argument depends? So the question is asking us to find out the assumption on which the argument is based. Now, let us find out what are the assumptions that we have drawn while finding the conclusion apt in the given passage? From the first statement or premise, we found out that we generally presume that a tyrant is unjust. Second presumption is subjects 
if consider that a tyrant is unjust but he is related to religion or is god rearing or pious then they might tolerate him so subjects believe in god is our second presumption and our third presumption is that most of the subjects do not want to oppose their god so if they consider that the god is on the side of the ruler then they would not want to oppose or stand against the ruler as well so these are the three presumptions that we had thought of looking at the answer choices first one says the subjects of tyrannical rulers typically believe that there is a power other than mortal now see this option is similar to my presumption that subjects believe in god let us look at other options a tyrant cannot rule unless he has divine power on his side no this is not the assumption it was only the advice given to the tyrant that he would rule better having divine power on his side so this is not what we assumed the third option says the subjects of tyrannical rulers can rarely be fooled by appearance this is not the assumption we have assumed exactly opposite of this because the subjects can be fooled by the appearance the author says it is a good advice to put on those appearances next option is tyrants who are devoted to religion will not treat their, treat their subjects unjustly this is also not the assumption general assumption is tyrant is unjust and the last option says for a tyrant the appearance of uncommon devotion to religion is a more effective means of ruling than unjust treatment this is also not the assumption because yes the appearance related to religion is most effective for the tyrant but it is effective as compared to to the situation where the tyrant is not using the appearance whereas unjust treatment is same in both the circumstances whether or not the tyrant uses the appearance so from the given choices it is only option a that seems to be the right choice and yes a is the right answer let us now look at another sample question do reduction of interest rate by the reserve bank of india may fuel inflation it is not bad policy measure but it will promote growth because it will promote growth which one of the following is a valid inference from the above statement now in this given question we see that we only have premises and the conclusion is not given as part of the passage so there are three premises that we can draw from the given statement first reduction of interest rate by rbi may fuel fuel inflation that is reduction in interest rate increases inflation second premise is reduction in interest rate is not a bad policy that is it's a good policy measure and the third premise is why is it so reduction is in reduction of interest rate will promote growth so these are the three premises that we can draw from the given statement now the question asks us which is the valid inference let us let us look at the various inferences first inflation and policies which may fuel it are considered bad yes this is the right inference second policy measures that promote growth are desirable yes even this is the right inference interest rate reduction will promote growth yes and fourth says interest rate reduction is desirable yes so all of these four inferences can be comfort com comfortably drawn from the information given therefore let us look at the answer choices clearly in option d we have an answer 
that each of the four are the right inferences. So we'll choose that one. And yes, D is the right answer. So these are the ways in which passage type questions can be answered. We will discuss some fundamental concepts of logical reasoning and more such questions in upcoming videos. Till then, stay safe, stay at home. Thank you.